Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about menopause. Now, menopause has become this condition. It's a real condition. And number one, it is not an illness. It is a normal, natural, biological process that happens with all women. Uh, it basically ends the, the, you know, it concludes the end of fertility in a woman's body. But today, as we can see, menopause is becoming more of an event that happens. You know, we have young women at the age of 39 and 40 and 41, and they have a couple of symptoms which resemble menopause, and they think that they're going to menopause. Menopause is becoming something that is spoken, you know, spoken about in all social circles. And if we go back a couple of years, you know, and we look at the lives of our parents or our grandparents or people that we know who are elderly, uh, they didn't even know when menopause came and went. All of a sudden, their period stopped. There was a little bit of spotting, and that was it. You know, menopause had come and there were no symptoms like the symptoms that we're facing today. So what's changed? What's the big problem about menopause and how can we make it better? I think before we start talking about food and before we start talking about hormones, uh, let's understand you know, what happens in menopause. So number one, your ovaries start to produce less estrogen. Now we know that estrogen is a very important hormone in the human body. It gets a bad rap because when we read about estrogen, you know, receptor positive cancers and fibroids and cysts, and you keep hearing these statements about excess estrogen in your system, it scares all of us. So menopause seems like something great where your estrogen levels normally fall. But we shouldn't confuse estrogen, that is a hormone that your ovaries produce, with something called xenoestrogens. These are estrogens that mimic real estrogen in the human body and wreak havoc with your cells and with your hormones. We get this when we drink a lot of water from plastic bottles, something called bisphenol A, which is BPA. We get this when we use a lot of toxic chemicals which enters our skin through the creams that we use, the shampoos, all the cosmetics that we keep putting onto our system. There are good ones and there are bad ones. The, one that, the ones that are filled with chemicals basically seeps into your skin and these are estrogen disruptors. These are hormone disruptors in the body. And then we have pollution, depending on where you read, all of us are breathing in carcinogens which basically act as xenoestrogen in the human body and wrecks havoc with our hormonal health. Now. Let's understand what happens when you have menopause. So I want you to picture a little almond, the size of an almond in your brain, behind your eyes at the top of your neck. This is called the hypothalamus. All of us have it. The hypothalamus communicates with your ovaries. Now remember, we keep talking about how the human body works on communication between hormones and trillions of cells. You either have the right communication or you have the wrong communication. You have the right communication, everything's working perfectly in your body. You have the wrong communication. For some people, it could be hair loss. It could be hair thinning. For some people, it could be inflammation. For some people, it could be an irregular period cycle. For some people, it could be weight gain. For some people, it could be the inability to lose weight. For some people, it could be a change in their skin. All of these problems because everything is controlled by hormones. So the hypothalamus basically has several functions in the human body, including regulating body temperature. And it communicates with your ovaries that produces estrogen, which is a hormone that communicates with your hypothalamus. As we grow older and we reach menopause, this communication starts getting disrupted. It starts getting slower and slower. So the night sweats, the hot flashes, all of these things that happen is improper communication between the hypothalamus in your brain and your ovaries. Are there solutions? Absolutely, yes. Will most women go through this? In most cases, yes. Is it preventable? Can we go through a smooth menopause with you know, as, with as less as problems as we know it to be today? Absolutely, yes. We're gonna talk about that right now. The number one thing before we talk about food, before we talk about lifestyle, is your mindset. The more you talk about menopause, the more you listen to everyone's stories about how painful their menopause is and how their lives have changed and how their libido has dropped and how they have vaginal dryness and they have excess weight in their belly area, you know, it's true, they're going through that. But the more you keep talking about that and your mindset starts getting formed and you start believing that you are going to go through that as well, well, that's exactly what's going to happen. We keep talking about mindsets. Where you put your attention, it grows. You put your attention on what's happening to other people who go through menopause and it starts fixing into your subconscious. That is exactly how your menopause is going to be. We have to understand everyone is different. Everyone is unique. People who have maintained their weight and have great lifestyles, healthy lifestyles, the right amount of sleep, all of these things, they sail through menopause. 
So just because you hear the bad symptoms of someone else's menopause, you don't know what their lifestyle has been. It doesn't mean that it has to be the same for you. So the most important thing is to change your mindset. Get into this with an open mindset. If you get into it with an expectation that you're going to have all these symptoms, that is exactly what is going to happen to you. So number one, what happens? Estrogen falls. Estrogen is so important in your body. It controls almost everything from your hair to your cellular repair, to your immunity, to your skin, to your hair, your reproductive organs, your libido, everything. So when this starts dropping, there's obviously, there's obviously a hormonal fluctuation that's gonna happen. But like I said, it's natural and it's a biological process. If you support your body with the right environment inside and around you, Okay, the fluctuation will be minimum and you will sail through menopause with minimum side effects. So what are some of the side effects or the symptoms? We have hot flushes, we have night sweats, we have sleeplessness, some, sort, some people call it insomnia. You have menopausal weight that you tend to gain in your belly area, your thighs, your hip, your butt. You have mood swings, you have stress and anxiety, you have a low sex drive, vaginal dryness, and you have fatigue and low energy. These are some of the common symptoms. Again, it doesn't mean you have to get it. Now, what are some of the solutions? It always starts off with food. We always understand that the right food in the body helps your cells communicate the right way. Food is information to your genes. Food is the energy that your cells require to communicate with one another. So we look at a class of foods called isoflavins. This contains estrogen, a softer kind of estrogen that can basically make up for the drop of estrogen that you have. Now you find this in common foods like chickpeas. You find it in moong dal, you find it in oats, you find it in sesame seeds, you find it in flax seeds. Yes, you even find it in raw fruits and raw vegetables. A great source of it is also alfalfa seeds, which is available in every country across the world. So you have enough of foods. And if you choose to continue drinking, although if you have strong symptoms of menopause, you may want to cut down your alcohol completely for a bit until your hormones basically balance out. But if you do want to have a little bit of alcohol, the best alcohol for you through menopause would be red wine, because again, it is rich in isoflavins. So you see, you have enough of foods, which if you're having a balanced diet, you will get the right amount of soft estrogen into your system. Now, you want to look at a high fiber diet. So when I say a high fiber diet, a diet that has fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, less of process and less of junk because that strips away all the fiber. So you're again looking at a balanced diet. You want to aim for a high fiber diet. Now, not too high because too much of fiber also causes irritation in the gut and causes an inflamed gut. So when you're looking at a balanced diet, you will have a high fiber diet automatically when you have the right amount of fruits and vegetables. Good fats, extremely important. Hormones require fats for the right balance. So people who go on oil-free diets and fat-free foods and low-fat products always have hormonal issues. And the first thing they lose is their hair. The second thing that they lose is the quality of the skin. And the third thing that they lose is their sex drive. This is whether you're in menopause and, or whether you're not going through menopause. You need good, healthy fats in your body. Vitamins, crucial vitamins, absorb in the presence of fat and your hormones need fat to function and to balance. So you wanna make sure that you have good fats like nuts and seeds, good oils like pure ghee or your cold pressed oils or whatever your source of fat is. Omega-3 will also help you to reduce the symptoms of menopause. So for those who are non-vegetarian, you can look at a good fish oil, or for those who are vegetarian, you can look at a good fat, a flaxseed oil extract or a omega-3 vegetarian source. You wanna maintain your vitamin D3 levels and your B12, extremely important. Although it's called a vitamin, vitamin B, D3, it is actually a precursor hormone to several other hormones in the human body. So you wanna make sure that you have, the, you have the right amount of D3. Women, as they tend to reach the age of 45 onwards, their, their D3 starts to fall. So you wanna make sure that your D3 levels and your B12 are really good. You wanna look after the health of your gut because all hormonal balance and the synthesis of hormones happens in your gut. So if you have symptoms of bloating, constant flatulence, burping, indigestion, constipation, four to five stools in a day, you know you have a gut problem and you know you need to fix that. So whether it's changing your diet, the right probiotic through your natural foods first, always try to get your, your probiotic first through your natural foods, second through your supplements if it's advised to you by a professional. 
You wanna make sure you have the right gut bacteria and microbiome to help your hormones work the right way. Remember, even as your body drops estrogen towards menopause, your body has this incredible power to manage with less estrogen if everything else in your body is working the right way. Your water intake, extremely important. You gotta maintain a good water intake for your body to work the right way with hormones. Cruciferous vegetables play a huge role in menopause and in fact, every aspect of your life. Of course, if you have thyroid problems, you wanna make sure it's cooked and it's not raw. If so, your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage, your kale, your radish, your arugula, depending on what's local to where you live, plays a huge role in managing your symptoms of menopause. You wanna cut down on alcohol, like I said. Sometimes if you're going through severe symptoms of menopause, you wanna drop your carbohydrates. By dropping your carbohydrates, you increase your fat and your protein. This helps you balance your hormones a little more, more effectively. Keep the good carbs in, move the white carbs away. Anything that's white, your refined salt, your white flour, your white sugar, all of that's a complete no and you should have a healthy menopause. Alcohol, again, you wanna cut down your alcohol because too much of alcohol, especially during menopause, tends to wipe out your good but, uh, gut bacteria and that's a problem. Stress, whether you have menopause or not, understand how it's impacting you. So when you're constantly stressed, you have chronic emotional stress, whatever stress you have in your life, that's the age in your life where your stress is actually supposed to reduce. You know, when we follow the cycles of life, according to nature, that's the time when we're moving into retirement or we're doing less or we're not supposed to have so much of stress as we do today. But that's different, we do, so how do we manage it? Let's understand what happens. If you produce cortisol, which is your stress hormone constantly, Pregnenolin, which is the mother hormone of all hormones that makes all other hormones, starts reducing. What happens is your progesterone goes up and your estrogen further reduces. So right now you're in menopause and you are already have low estrogen and because you're constantly and chronically stressed, you're further lowering your estrogen and that's what makes menopause so bad because your body can manage with lesser estrogen but because of your lifestyle and your stress, it further drops and that's when all the symptoms really shoot up and that's where you have most of the problems. Exercise, exercise through your menopause, exercise through your life, whether you're 15, you're 20, you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, 60, 70, 80. The body is designed to move. When you're sedentary, that is the worst thing that you can do, you, do to your body. So you wanna make sure that you exercise and maintain a good weight, which is why it is so important for women in their 30s and their 40s to prepare for a good menopause. You wanna have a healthy weight. If you enter menopause with more weight than you require, I'm talking about fat percentage, it may just be a little more difficult. So you wanna manage your weight effectively through your exercise. Meditation, again, for your stress levels to calm you down, to give you that strength from inside, to better manage your symptoms of menopause rather than react and go popping supplement after supplement, pill after pill, which will do nothing, nothing to make your menopause better other than changing the environment inside of your body and outside and around you. Sleep, again, so important because while we sleep, that's when all the hormonal balance happens. Again, whether you're a child, whether you're a teenager, 20, 30, 50, 70, 80, 90, you need sleep to do all the magic that the human body needs to do. And it can only do that magic when you sleep. There is no medicine in the world, there is no food in the world that can perform better than a good night of sleep. Because while you sleep, your body's intelligence repairs you, it rejuvenates you, it balances your hormones, it detoxifies you. That's the magic of sleep. And like I said, to end it with a reminder, what you talk about all the time is what's gonna happen. So if you keep talking and fearing menopause, all of that stuff, don't listen to what's happening around. You know what you have in front of you, your life, your body, your health, and what you can change. You just be focused on that. You don't look left, you don't look right. You don't worry what's happening around you. You worry what's in front of you, your life, and you move forward with that. Menopause doesn't have to be a bad thing, okay? A lot of people have gone through it before, Without a, without a problem and that's what we should aim for as well. So it comes down to your lifestyle and it comes down to your environment. Have a great day everyone, until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.